Today is Monday, July 21, 2014. It's the 202nd day of the year. There are 163 days remaining until the end of 2014. Sunrise today is at 526 a.m. The sun sets at 827 p.m. Length of daylight hours today is 15 hours, 35 seconds. One minute, 52 seconds shorter than yesterday. Tomorrow will be one minute, 55 seconds shorter than today. The waning crescent moon appears above the horizon today with 25.7% illumination at 1.18 a.m. and sets at 4.04 p.m. The moon passes above downtown Rutland City at 243,629 miles distant from the center of planet Earth within the second zodiacal designation, Taurus, the bull. On this day in 365 of the Christian era, a tsunami devastates the city of Alexandria, Egypt. The tsunami is caused by the Crete earthquake of 365, estimated to be at least 8.5 on the Richter scale. 5,000 people perish in the city of Alexandria, and at least 45,000 more die outside the city. Crete is a Greek island. To travel from Crete to Alexandria, you take a ferry from the port of Heraklion to the Greek mainland. You drive north and then east through Greece to Ankara, Turkey, about 1,548 kilometers, then south through Syria, Lebanon, and the state of Israel. Enjoy the heck out of that. Then to the Jordanian port city of Aqaba. From there, you'll drive across the Sinai Peninsula north and west to Suez. Take a slight right onto Suez Canal Road. You'll drive through Cairo, and then you'll be in the Nile Delta, finally Alexandria proper. The whole trip, straight through, 55 hours with no traffic, but expect sick traffic and crazy drivers through the cities. So, probably longer. It's about 4,244 kilometers altogether, and there's some tolls along the way. Don't forget your passport and plenty of cash on hand for bakshish at border crossings. You can fly from Crete to Alexandria, too, if you're not into the road trip thing. Three and a half hours on Aegean Air, Egypt Air, or Turkish Airlines. 365 years after Jesus is born in Bethlehem, a place you can stop along your way just to check it out. But honestly, this summer, it's a whole lot healthier just to keep driving. On the day that tsunami rises up and churns across the Mediterranean south and east from the quake's epicenter under the seafloor near Crete, in a lot less time than any of that. Crete itself is, of course, devastated. The city's crumbled. The island itself raised up at least 10 meters and then dropped back down again. Along the North African coast of Libya, Egypt, the tsunami flings boats miles inland across the delta. Alexandria destroyed. Towns and cities washed away, tens of thousands killed. Conspiracy theories of the day involve the heavy antagonism between rising Christians and old school pagans, the wrath of one god or another. The events of the day leave such an impression on the people of the late antiquity that hundreds of years later, even to the end of the 6th century, Alexandria every year commemorates this day of horror. On this day in 1865 in the Market Square of Springfield, Missouri, Wild Bill Hickok shoots and kills Davis, Little Dave Tut, in what is regarded as the first Western showdown. Tut and Hickok meet when, after the conclusion of the war between the states, Tut, on his way west, spends time in Springfield, where young Hickok, then 28, is known as a gambler, a horse trader, a whore master. Tut, a year older from Yellville, Arkansas, has served with the Confederates in the late war. Hickok is a Yankee from Homer, Illinois, a Union Army veteran. Despite their differences, Tut and Hickok quickly become friends owing to their common interests and gamble together. Tut even lends Hickok money, not only for gambling, but for horse trading. They get into unpleasantness about women. It's said that Tut leads Wild Bill's woman, Susanna Moore, astray, and that Bill ruins little Dave's sister. When Tut publicly demands Hickok pay back the money he's lent to him, the men argue about the amount. Tut says it's $35, but Hickok says it's only $25, Dave. And when Tut takes Hickok's gold watch as collateral, Hickok, surrounded by guys to whom Tut's also lent money, gives up the watch, but warns Tut about wearing it in public. Tut knows if he wears the watch, he'll humiliate Hickok, but if he doesn't, he'll be marked as a coward. So little Dave makes the mistake of prominently wearing Hickok's Waltham Repeater gold watch at about 6 p.m. on this day in 1865. Hickok confronts Tut. The two men face off at between 50 yards and 75 yards account differ. Simultaneous shots are exchanged. Tut misses wide of his mark, but Hickok tags Tut through the heart. Little Dave calls out, boys, I'm killed, and falls dead in the street. Soon thereafter, before Judge Sempronius Hamilton Boyd, Hickok is tried for manslaughter. But when the jury at Boyd's suggestion nullifies the charges, Wild Bill is acquitted, and the fight becomes legendary as the first of its kind two years later when, in February 1867, a sensational account of the fight is published in Harper's new monthly magazine. Hard guys 
all over the West take to emulating the quick-draw style gunfight between Wild Bill Hickok and Davis Little Dave Tut in the main street in Springfield, Missouri on this day in 1865. On this day in 1959, Pumpsy Green, born Elijah Jerry Green, October 27, 1933 in Boley, Oklahoma, becomes the first African-American to play with the Boston Red Sox, which has the distinction of being the last team in Major League Baseball to integrate its lineup. On this day, Green comes in as pinch runner for Vic Wirtz and stays in as shortstop. Sox lose 2-1 to one to the Chicago White Sox. When Green retires from baseball after the 1963 season playing for the New York Mets, he goes to work for the Berkeley, California school system where he stays for more than 20 years as a baseball coach and summer school math teacher. He lives in El Cerrito, California, north of Berkeley, and has been married to his wife Marie for 50 years. Pumpsy Green is 80 years old, alive and well. The 35th President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, says those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. From Redland, Vermont, this is Richard Alcott speaking.